Isaiah, chapter 37, verse 21. Pick up where we left off. And this is Hezekiah has gone before the Lord. Rashika, an ambassador of Sennacherib, has threatened Judah. And there's details, and there, there's a letter brought before Hezekiah. He goes before the temple, folds it out before God, and he prays. Verse 21. Then Isaiah, the son of Amos, the author of the book, sent to Hezekiah. So Isaiah doesn't go before the king, saying, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel. Is your God the God of Israel? If your God is not the God of Israel, you don't have God. You can't have an American God. You can't have an Italian God. You can't have a Rome God. You can't have a Greek God. China guy, you got to have the God of, a of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob of Israel. That's the God. Not Ishmael. That's not God. Whereas thou hast prayed to me against Sennacherib, the king of Assyria. Now look at that. Rafshika is the mouth of Sennacherib, but God charges Sennacherib for sending. Rabshika. And this is the same stance that God has for a husband and wife. Jezebel signed letters in her husband's name and has uh, Naboth killed. And God tells Elijah, hey, go speak to Ahab. Say, why have you killed Naboth? Now, let me ask you a question. Is Sennacherib saved? I don't believe he's saved. He's got another God we'll see in a moment. And yet God holds him to the words of Rabshika. I don't know how many, I should, but I don't, how many U.S. presidents we've had. I don't know how many kings and queens your, uh, England's had. Of all the world rulers and leaders, every one of them that sent somebody out, God is going to hold them responsible. Aren't you glad the great white throne judgment is after time stops? I mean, if you think the line at Walmart's long enough, wait to every person that is not saved and every person that is saved before the church age and after the church age, because if their name was found written in the book of life or was not found in the book of life, Every human being is going to be judged at the Great White Throne Judgment outside of the save of the church. Eh? Man, I'm glad eternity is during the Great White Throne Judgment. That's going to be a long time. Jesus said in Matthew 12, every idle word, and we've been seeing some idle words here. But we'll, we'll keep on reading, we'll keep on studying more, because there's more to this section. This is the word which the Lord has spoken concerning him. Sennacherib, the virgin, the daughter of Zion, that's Israel, Jerusalem, has despised thee, Sennacherib. We don't like you. And laugh thee to scorn. I don't know if Hezekiah is laughing, but he's taking his, he's got sackcloth. And the daughter of Jerusalem has shaken her head at thee. Who do you think you are? Whom, Sennacherib, has thou reproached and blasphemed? The words of Rabshika, chapter 36. And then parts of uh, chapter 37. We did last night, Lord willing. And against whom thou hast exalted thy voice, pride, and lifted up thy eyes on high, pride, even against the Holy One of Israel, God the Father, Almighty, Jehovah, by thy servants, Rabshika, hast thou reproached the Lord. So there is the charge. You sent Rabshika, you're responsible. You know, that's 
one of the things that's not really taught today in the churches, never mind the schools. Responsibility. And has said. Now God is going to quote verses 24, 25, 26, and 27. He's quoting Sennacherib that we don't ever hear about. <coughs> Jesus said by every idle word, Matthew 12, shall man give an account. And here's the account. Friend, if God is telling us about a heathen man is going to die and go to hell, what he said, what do you think he's going to say about the Christian at the judgment seat of Christ? That is not under the blood. What do you think is going to happen at the great white throne judgment when everybody had to get account for every idle word? Aren't you glad the great white throne judgment is eternity with no time? Imagine from the first words, mama, dad, dad, to the final words. If it's not put under the blood. And it's not for the dedication and for the use and the glorification of Jesus Christ. By the multitude of my chariots, Sennacherib speaking, am I come up to the height of the mountains, to the size of Lebanon, and I will cut down the tall cedars thereof. He ain't going to cut. He's going to have men going to do it for him. You think Sennacherib is going to be out there with an axe? The king, I will enter into the height of his border, I would assume Lebanon, and the forest of his Carmel. God, he's talking about God. Carmel is in, in Israel, Mount Carmel. <clears throat> I have digged, I don't think so, but, and drunk water, okay. He's saying I made wells. I think he paid somebody that well or ordered them. With the sole of my feet have I dried up the rivers of the besieged places. <clears throat> I don't know. Hast thou not heard long ago? So, so what's some of the movie? A long, long time ago in a far off galaxy. <laughs> in a long, long time ago, there was a... Pr they, they stole it from the Bible because the devil knows what's in the Bible. How I have done it. I have done it. And of ancient time. Now, we're getting Sennacherib, but we're also getting the devil. Ancient times. Sennacherib, I don't know how old Sennacherib is, but he ain't that old. And this is like uh, uh, in Ezekiel, the, 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 the king of Tyre. God's dressing the devil through the king of Tyre. And this same thing. Like, and, you know, Jesus turned around Peter, you know, Satan. So Sennacherib has taken on the characteristics of the devil. Now have I brought it to pass. Thou shouldst be to lay waste defense cities and ruinous heaps. And it's true. Even Hezekiah said, listen, he's destroyed cities. He's destroyed fortresses. He's Therefore, their habitation were a small power and were dismayed and confounded. They were as grass of the field, as a green herb, as the grass on the housetop, as corn blasted before be grown up. Those are the words of Sennacherib. Pride, 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 pride. If you don't see the American presidency in there, if you don't see American in there, God speaking. But I know thy abode. I know where you live. And thy going out. I know where you go. Behold the eyes of the, eyes of the Lord in every place. Behold the evil and the good. And thy coming in. I know where you're going out. I know when you're coming in. Sennacherib, and all people. And thy rage against me. I know you're angry with me. That's God speaking. That's God speaking. 
because thy rage against me and thy tumult is come up to my ears. I'm listening. Every time you take the Lord's name and the Jesus name in, in vain, God, I heard that. When you mock that preacher or that person that's bringing the gospel to you, I heard that. Paul, why persecute thou me? Said Jesus. And Paul never laid a hand on Jesus. Therefore will I put my hook in thy nose. Ouch. <laughs> That's complete, that's complete control of a man. If you put a hook in his nose, he ain't going to run. <laughs> you have to rip his nose open. And these idiots that put these, these, these jewelry in their nose. That's a, that's, a, that's a symbol of slavery, you know. But we're not slaves. Slaves is bad. And then you put those rings in your nose. Or a pig. And my bridle in thy lips, like a horse, like an animal. I will turn thee back by the way which thou cameth. <laughs> you're going in Jerusalem? No, you're not. No, you're not. And this shall be a sign unto thee. Now, verse 30, signs are for Jews. And if we didn't have 1 Corinthians 1.11, you know, he's showing the signs of Zernacrib? No. God, all of a sudden, verse 30, all right, now I'm talking to you, Hezekiah. Wow. You got to rightly study the word of God. God is speaking to Sennacherib 28-29. 30, all right, now I'm speaking to you, Hezekiah, and to Israel, <coughs> or Judah. This shall be a sign unto thee. Jews require a sign. You shall eat this year as groweth of itself. The second year, that which groweth of its same. And the third year, sow ye and reap, and plant vineyards, and eat the fruit thereof. Food. The remnant that is escape of the house of Judah shall again take root downward and bear fruit upward. Healthy as a tree planted by rivers of water. In other words, Sennacherib ain't going to do nothing to you. Relax. For out of Jerusalem shall go forth a remnant, and the escape out of Mount Zion, the zeal of the Lord of hosts shall do this. All right? Now we're going to turn the subject back to the king of Syria. Therefore, therefore thus saith the Lord, Concerning the king of Assyria, Sennacherib. He shall not come into this city, Jerusalem, nor shoot an arrow there, nor come before it with shields, nor cast a bank against it. No military campaign against Jerusalem. By the way that he came, by the same way shall he return, and shall not come into the city, save the Lord. I will defend this city, to save it for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. Oh, Sennacher is not coming. Okay. So, here we go. Now, verse 36. Many people are troubled over verse 36. And I've, I, I, I know the one cause. And I, I'm thinking there's another cause too. Then the angel of the Lord went forth and smote in the camp of the Assyrians, the army of Syrian, a hundred and four score and five thousand, a hundred and eighty-five thousand men, military men. That's one angel. A hundred and eighty-five thousand men. Now, read my note here. One angel, a hundred and eighty-five thousand dead soldiers. In Matthew 26, 13, Jesus said, let's go there, Matthew 26, 13. Matthew 26, 13. <clears throat> Matthew 26, 13. Oh, my Bible sticks. In the right place. 
Oh, 56. Matthew 26, 53. 53. Bible says, Think is that now I cannot now pray to my father. He shall earn, presently give me more than 12 legions of angels. One angel has killed 185,000 dead soldiers. A legion is 3,000 men, Roman legion. 3,000 times 12 would be 36,000 angels. Times 185,000 men. That would be 6,660,000 men. Hundreds, thousand. Yeah, 6,660,000,000 million men. In the 2000 world population, there was 7 billion people. So in Matthew 26, 13, Jesus is like, you know what? I can destroy everybody right now. Just call me uh, 36,000 angels. I can destroy it all. This is one angel. The angel, by the way, this angel of the Lord is the Lord Jesus Christ. Went forth and smoke. Of the camp of the Syrians, a hundred and four score and five thousand. When they rose up early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpse. Well, how can they raise up early in the morning if they were dead corpse? A. It didn't say it killed the whole entire army of the Syrians. When it says 185,000, that may not have been the whole entire Syrian army. There may have been more. Do. Or also thereof B would be maybe when the people of Judah woke up in the morning, the, the, the army was dead. We move on. So Sennacherib, king of Assyria, departed and went and returned and dwelt in Nineveh. Nineveh is the capital of Assyria. And it came to pass as he was worshiping in the house of Nitrock, his God, small g, okay, that Adarimelech and Shel Caesar, his sons, smote him with the sword. What kind of God is this? Excuse me, Dimwad. So, Nakrib, here comes your children, they're going to kill you. <laughs> Great God. They say, turn around. So if you want to see something here, I'll show you something. There is the God Nishrach. Notice a little purse. He's got a little purse. And a little wristwatch. Look at that. Is that sandals? <laughs> got a bad knee joint. He's got the head. I mean, hey, look, that may be a football. He's got the head of an eagle. The same eagle of the Germany and the same eagle of America. That's the God that sat there and watched his king worshiping him while his two sons came in and slayed him with a sword. And they escaped into the land of Armenia. And Ashdod, his son, reigned in his stead. That's it. Of that's it. The Syrians have been conquered and shot, and Sennacherib is dead. 